Kim McIntosh and I teach biology at Shadow Mountain High School. This presentation is about ecology and ecology is the study of organisms and their interactions. So when we're talking about organisms we might be talking about plants, we might be talking about animals, we might be talking about the fungus which serves as a decomposer, we might be talking about algae, so it's any type of organism and its interactions with the natural world. All right, so let's define a few terms for first. Um, some of these terms we tend to speak of and we use them interchangeably, but they have actual definitions. Surprise, surprise. So an ecosystem is all of the living and non-living components in that area. So an ecosystem we can talk about on a very large scale so we can talk about the earth ecosystem and we can also talk about it on a small scale so we could be looking at um, the ecosystem of a lake or a river um, but it does include the living the animals the plants and the non-living components so the rocks and the water and things like that all right a community that's all of the species that interact with each other so when we talk about a community, we're not talking about just one species, we're talking about all the species that are there interacting with each other. So like in this picture right here, we see the ants and we very quickly see that, okay, there's a species of ants here, but they're on that plant and that plant is a species as well. And so a species is um, all of the same type of organisms that can interbreed with each other. So species, um, the definition of species is, is rather important because we need to be talking about just one particular type of animal. And how do we put them into a type where it's just that animal? Well, if they can breed together, if they can reproduce, then they're a species. So. Um, things like when a tiger and a lion breed and they produce a liger, well a liger is not a species because it can't interbreed with other ligers. All right, the habitat is the physical place that the species inhabits. So when we talk about habitat, we would be talking about, okay, these birds live in this habitat of the forest. And then the organism is the individual, um, the individual bird that we might be speaking of, or the individual tree. So the organism brings it down to a very small level. All right, so I wanna also talk about abiotic and biotic. So abiotic is the non-living things in the environment. Okay, so abiotic would be the rocks. Abiotic would be the water in that environment because water is a molecule, it's not alive. And then the biotic would be anything that's alive in that environment. So it would be the sheep, it would be the grass, it would be the insects. Um, all right, succession is, um, Another thing that we're, we study in ecology, succession is when an area has, um, it's basically been wiped clean. And this is really, um, it happens when there's like a glacier that recedes and that land is pretty much empty. It's been covered by ice and there's nothing there. And so there's, there's this way that plants will build up in that area. And what happens is it starts off with very small plants, okay? Um, seeds will be blown in on the wind and so you'll get a few annual plants, but nothing very large yet. Well, these annual plants, they really do prepare the soil and perennial plants and grasses start to take over. So you see less of the annual plants and then you just see perennial plants and grasses. And then they modify the soil even more and you'll start to see shrubs. And so the shrubs will pretty much take over and you might see a few perennial plants and grasses in there with them, but they pretty much take over that area. And then 
softwood trees and pines will start to grow. The soil has been um, amended or modified enough to where the trees can start to grow there. And then after a long period of time, you'll get the hardwood trees, the very tall, um, very long-lived trees. Then we have what's called biomes, and biomes are areas of the world, different ecosystems, um, different types of environments. So we'll have tropical rainforests, and tro tropical rainforests really are defined by location. So they're very close to the equator. They, um, they're very warm year round and they get lots of rain. And so there are different plants and animals in that area as compared to what you would see in the savannas or the grasslands. Grasslands um, are generally at um, a mid latitude. So they'll be um, a farther away from the equator and still warm, but they might have um, harsher winters. And so obviously you would see different plants and animals there. There's the tundra, which is Arctic area, and Tyaga, which is um, coniferous forests mostly. We have estuaries where the, um, the water from rivers meets the ocean. We have deserts, which we live in here in Arizona, and they get very little rainfall and it's very warm. So definitely a different type of plants and animals live there. We have wetlands, and wetlands are really areas where there, there are a lot of plants and animals, but also an incredible amount of water. And so in wetlands, it's almost difficult to tell the difference between um, where the water stops and the land starts because the land is so wet. There's deciduous forests, and then we have the marine ecosystems and the freshwater ecosystems. And you're gonna be taking a much closer look at biomes in some of the assignments for the class.